It is time now to imagine it. We are inside the tinkering space in the Idea Lab. Is that right? Correct. Yeah, and do you have any idea what this is? It's fossilized dinosaur poop. Thanks for handing it to me, yes. Carl Nelson, the chief scientist <laughs> at the Imagination Station. Why do you have that? Well, we have a new uh, temporary exhibition called Dinosaurs Around the World, and they have 13 animatronic dinosaurs, which means they move. Right. Okay, and they move using something called hydraulics. Oh, okay. So I thought we'd talk about what hydraulics means. Right. Let's okay. the poop down. So we're going to start, well, actually, we're going to hold the poop, too. Oh, great. So we're going to talk about three <laughs> states of matter. Gases, go ahead and hold the balloon. Gases are compressible. If you squeeze that balloon, you can kind of, like, compress it. We can compress air molecules into a gas cylinder, okay? Yeah. They're compressible. That's a takeaway. Now, dinosaur poop, I'll take that, I'll give that. If you, you really can't compress a solid. Right? The atoms are locked into a latticework, and they, you really can't, you might be able to crush it, but you can't really squeeze it. It's incompressible. Okay. All right? Now, the final thing I wanted to talk about are liquids. Although, first, here, here's some air, right, in this yeah. cylinder. If I close the end and squeeze it, I can compress it almost halfway in volume. Sure. So air is compressible. Liquids, on the other hand, are not compressible. Here, take this. Two syringes connected with a hose. If you squeeze that side, apply a force per area, Mm -hmm. my piston moves. I can do the same with yours. Force per area, and that piston moves. This is kind of the basics of how hydraulics work. The pressure you apply to that liquid appears everywhere in the liquid, causing the other piston to move up. Now, things get really interesting when you change the size of the pistons, okay? So instead of equal size pistons, if you had, let's say, a piston that has two and a half inches of water in it, connected to a much bigger piston, Hang on a second, I'm gonna see if we can mit see if we can give you a scale to see how much this guy moves. Okay, go ahead and squeeze yours. All right. Watch my piston. You move two and a half inches, I move maybe a half an inch at the most. Yeah. And that is the advantage of hydraulics. You applied that force per area, a pressure over there. Since I have a larger area, I get a larger force. The trade-off is it only moves a little bit. Now, if you were resourceful, you'd put more hydraulic fluid in there and pump it again, pump it again, pump it again. Everybody you'd be able to, I'm not resourceful. You'd be able to lift a car off the ground, and that's what garages use. They yeah, use yeah, hydraulic sure. presses. Okay. okay. Uh, heavy machinery uses that same principle of hydraulics. I was just now, thinking of me you know, pumping a syringe to lift a car. You know, probably not a syringe, but, <laughs> but if you scale it up, you might be able to do it. Now, down in the tinkering space, we've been playing with this idea. We've been making a couple little uh, contraptions here. Go ahead and give this a pull and a push oh, and see what great. happens. That's great. So by combining the hydraulic action with some axles and some levers, you can actually make things that move. And they just, they, I love how smoothly they move, right? Yeah. They're just very, very smooth. And this is what's happening inside our dinosaurs upstairs. In fact, we've taken it to the next level here. We've got a control panel for you, Tony. Oh, nice. Four levers <laughs> and sort of a, a skeleton of a dinosaur. He doesn't really have his skin on right now, but go ahead and wow. give a couple levers a pull and see what oh, happens. Oh, man, this is great. This so reminds me of can lift them up. the old robotic set can, I used to have. We can have. turn them. And the cool thing about this is one of our Idea Lab associates, Devin, created this. Um, he used different colored water so you can see where the pistons are and what action it's doing. So um, it's actually something you could probably even do at home. Uh, just, oh, you, you <laughs> killed the dinosaur. <laughs> His eyeball fell out. But that's okay. We can fix it. <laughs> right. That's what science is all about. Exactly, Experimenting, exactly. trial and Tinkering error. And playing. You can come down here and tinker yourself at the Imagination <laughs> Station. And if you come on a Saturday and you live in Lucas County, a kid who also lives in Lucas County gets in free with a paid adult admission. That is exactly. one thing that they do here at the Imagination Station to give yes. back to those who tinker, I think I broke your toy. That's okay, but we can fix it. That's all the fun we have down here. So you can find out the science of the dinosaurs and the science behind the exhibit yeah. of the dinosaurs, yeah. dinosaurs around the world, right here at the Imagination Station. And thanks very much, Carl, because that's sure. how you imagine it.